All right, hey everybody. It's been a couple minutes since uh, my last video, but uh, rest assured I have been quite busy uh, figuring out a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, it's been a blast. These last couple of weeks, um, not only did I take a couple of vacations, um, but it went deep on a bunch of tech, mostly on the Houdini side, but a lot on the Unreal side as well. And I wanna talk about those lessons learned and what I've been up to the last couple of weeks. Um, made a huge, huge progress on the Houdini to Unreal Engine workflow. That's something I'm gonna show here in a second. Um, but I fixed things like uh, automatic creation of collisions around the meshes that are generated from Houdini into Unreal, automatic material uh, attribution, um, made progress on the level itself in terms of getting the second floor in, um, created an, another stair staircase HDA in there, um, got another texture and substance, and, and substance designer and incorporated that into the HDA as well. And I'll go into that here in just a second. But I spent a majority of my time uh, really going deep on Houdini. Houdini 20.5 has just recently shipped and it's got a number of new things that made me pause and go and take a deeper look and spend a lot of time checking out those new features. There's two major features in Houdini 20.5 that I've been going deep on. One is called Apex which is the all-purpose execution framework that's in Houdini. And it's mostly targeting rigging workflows, but it's, it's gonna be much more than that. And the other one is called Copernicus, uh, which is basically think of Copernicus or COPS as a substance designer um, kind of competitor, but it's built into Houdini. The reason why this is super interesting is, uh, you know, the, the ability to incorporate all these workflows into one tool can really streamline a bunch of things. But more than that, Copernicus has a number of things that I think in the long term could actually overtake Substance Designer in regards to the workflow between, you know, real model rasterization into your into your textures, your procedurally generated textures. Um, so that's looking super cool. And I'll have some links down below to, to point you in that direction if you haven't heard about some of these things. And then a couple of the other little smaller things is I've actually been uh, capturing a lot of lessons learned as I run into them via shorts uh, or short form videos that I've been putting up on YouTube. Um, but my daughter has also kind of forced me to create a uh, TikTok account and we've been putting those shorts up on TikTok and it's been super interesting to see how different that algorithm works and how many views that has been driving. Um, I have no clue how it works. Uh, my daughter's managing that whole thing, so that's kind of cool. Um, so with that, let me jump in and start showing you the details of some of these things. I'm going to start with Unreal and Houdini. All right, lots of progress made on the Houdini to Unreal side. So here I am in Unreal. Um, if I back up here a little bit, see, I've, I've added quite quite a bit more um, to the HDA. Um, uh, here, let me just actually just do a play uh, and show you what this thing is looking like. So I've got a new texture that I'm still in the process of working on that I'll show you here in a second on the walls. I've got collision is now working and it's all auto generated and, and working well. I've jammed in this new, uh, <laughs> this, this stairwell, which clearly is not even close to done, but that is also procedurally generated. I figured out a bunch of stuff with the lighting. I was having problems with leakage and it turns out I was, turning on the, the volumetric um, light uh, setting was just wrong inside un, uh, inside Unreal. So this is all starting to, starting to get there. Um, I've got this floor, the second floor is being auto-generated, um, et cetera. So that's, that's all cool. Now the key things here that um, I wanted to show you uh, in terms of lessons learned, now here I am in, in Houdini. This is that stair HDA, created that from a curve threw some points on it, jammed in some simple geo. So that was pretty straightforward. The thing that was not straightforward, however, um, was figuring out how to auto-generate the collisions. And that came down to uh, actually creating a collision geo group name and associating that with the with the primitives right here. Um, this, I'm, I'm actually naming the colliders inside Unreal so I can understand what I'm looking at inside Unreal. So these magic um, names, so these attribute names and values 
is how the integration is working. I think I had in, in a, an original video, um, I was also talking about how I was having a hard time figuring out the um, instancing. Well, that is also driven through uh, these, these various attributes. So let me show you where I'm doing that. If I jump into this HDA, then I come over to where I'm creating, see like these interior columns, for instance. You notice I've got an attribute wrangle here where I'm assigning for every primitive, which is every individual wall segment, I'm giving it its own uh, specific ID, which then Unreal understands how to split up those instances. So when you go back and bake this HDA in Unreal, each one of these walls is now a separate piece. So if I go back over to Unreal, you can see that I can select that wall. I can select each of these walls by themselves. And that's going to be important as I get into more and more, you know, um, build out of these of these levels. It's now I don't have to mess around with um, doing that hack that I showed in one of my of my earlier videos. The other piece that I figured out is a great way to make the materials be auto assigned every time I bake the HDA inside Unreal. And all I'm doing there is I take the material that I have here, I right click, I say copy reference, I pop back over to Un uh, Houdini. And right here, I've got another way to basically I paste that reference into this material path. And this little magic piece of code here uh, goes all the way back over to Unreal so that when I bake, it knows to apply that material that I've created in Unreal uh, to the objects that are created through the Houdini engine <laughs> inside Unreal. Uh, so it's like uh, an inception kind of thing here. Uh, but that's been working great. So you see that material automatically generated and applied to those walls every time I bake this out. Now, speaking of materials, this is the material uh, that I built uh, for the walls. Uh, you see here in Substance Designer, uh, this graph, it's actually um, pretty straightforward. Uh, I, I, I always cracks me up when someone shows one of these graphs and just says, oh, it's real simple, but it, it's, it's not. Uh, <laughs> it takes a little while to get used to, um, but it's super cool. Uh, if you haven't used, by the way, one of these uh, dot uh, little nodes, it's this dot node. This is a great way to keep your, uh, keep your graphs, you know, less, less crazy. See how, when I select that, it actually shows me where it's coming from. But when I deselect just makes, makes less lines, things, things are easier to manage. Anyway, the thing that uh, is super cool about what's going on here, substance designer is when I right click on here and say export outputs, I've got it set to automatically export every time I make a change. And the great thing about that is that every time I make a change, I can bounce right over to Marmoset tool bag to see it in real time inside the engine, which, which actually turns out to be a really great workflow as I'm trying to work this up and get it into Unreal. I've still got a ways to go before this is really uh, final. I really like the, the floor, but the, the wall is still coming. But that workflow of tweaking it, jumping between uh, Substance Designer, having that automatically generated, and then taking a look at it in Marmoset, because Mar Marmoset automatically updates, has proven to be quite, quite uh, effective. All right, now I want to show you Apex, which is that new feature in Houdini 20.5 that um, I'm pretty excited about, actually. What I've been doing to come up to speed on Apex, because it is still in beta inside 20.5, um, that and Copernicus, they're both in beta. Uh, so what that means is the documentation is, is, is a little, little scarce. Uh, but luckily this guy, Max Rose, uh, has got a jump on a bunch of tutorials around how to deal with Apex. Uh, and I've been going through them. And what I've, what I found is that these are extremely uh, powerful. And if you watch those Max Rose videos, you'll see how you can manipulate all these rigs, etc., through these graphs. But I was actually more interested in doing it via code. Uh, and so I followed his, his videos, but then change the actual rig itself that does the squash and modify of this ball into code. And let me, let me show you what this looks like. So this is the, the, here's a ball and I can squash and deform it. Okay. So Apex allows you to basically encapsulate the, the logic 
around the how to deform this mesh and allows you to compartmentalize that and reuse it so that I could apply this same logic to any mesh. It's, I'm not gonna get into that because it's, it's crazy cool. The thing that I just wanted to show you here though is I've built and followed along with Max Rose's videos and then turned the ball rig into code. And so this little node here is feeding my apex graph with this chunk of code. I've actually um, using my favorite editor, which is Sublime, to write that code. And so this is what that logic in order to do that squash and deform is right here. But the cool thing is that it is now encapsulated into this subgraph that I can then hook up to any graph through this component script, which is also represented in this, in this um, little script here. This is literally, all this is doing is hooking up my existing uh, rig to that ball rig, which is represented here. And, and this gets super meta, um, but this gives me and, and other artists unbelievable power to do whatever you need to do and more importantly encapsulate that into reusable chunks that you can then go and use with any of your other future uh rigs and, and what have you it's it's going to be really cool still a lot more to learn here but really really promising tech all right so a lot of progress has been made there's so much more to do um but I'm really, really enjoying this stuff. Um, keep your eyes out. Unreal Engine 5 continues to get better. Houdini continues to get better. Um, it's all about the tools in so many different ways. Uh, and just learning these things has just been a blast, let alone actually building um, the project and trying to get this thing done as soon as I can. All right. I hope you enjoyed that one. Cheers.